activity six. So you may not be a graphic artist, or maybe you are, and you are looking for some tool that your students can be graphic artists. Nevertheless, this tool is pretty neat. You can cartoonize things by taking pictures and being able to use the polyline tool and be able to um, make it cartoon-like and even add it to pictures. There's so many like storytelling ideas you can use with this, taking regular pictures and animating them. Um, not animating as in motion, but anyway. Um, so this activity is a uh, picture of the Android robot from Google. And so I put a picture on there and I've already started it. And I'm just going to work through and show you some of the steps. And then if you want to go ahead and finish it, you're more than welcome or grab your own picture. You can make those graphic arts as detailed or as non-detailed as possible um, just by adding some simple graphics. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are doing some graphic art with this Android picture that I brought up here. And so simple idea here is just take a picture, so we insert a picture, and crop it to how you might need it. Um, so that way you can focus just on that particular part. And then go ahead and cartoonize on that. And like I said earlier, you can make them as detailed or as not detailed as possible, which means you can add lots of details for all these lines and colors and things like that, or not, and it has still come out looking pretty good. Uh, the biggest thing here is being able to order objects. So you see I have my picture here, and I've already started, so I'm going to control shift down. And you can see I've already added some graphics just for this. So I actually did the entire um, outline first of it in a kind of a base green, and then I added on top of it based on the shadows and the colors inside of it. Um, the eyedropper tool that I use is also here. I've listed it in, a, in the resource. You can use that because you'll see me using a lot uh, during this demonstration. Um, so let's just show one of the things you can do. So let's just go to the polylines and, you know, to simply do something, uh, you just want to kind of start with an outline. So I'm just going to do this very quickly because it, it does take some time. And let's just go zoom in a little bit more. Uh, I'll go all the way to 200. Because you can always use your scroll to make these lines. So let's say I pick this line and I scroll all the way down to this one. If I click. And you're going to notice when I click because on your screen it will have a red kind of circle around it, so that way you know I'm left clicking. And so each time I click, I am just coming close as I can to the object. And notice this one is deeper, so I'll have to go this way, okay, up here, and then down here again. And so now you'll see I am clicking through. And as long as I don't double click or click really fast, it usually does fine. Just doing because I bet you can always edit the points later. But it's better when it's all together. So now I'll go all the way up here. I'm just going to finish with the lower half just so you can kind of see how I did this without taking too much of your time. This kind of reminds me of that guy who used to paint on television. He had the beard and just be on PBS and he would have a picture and he would just be talking about painting and talking about putting nice little leaves and all sorts of stuff on there. Kind of just reminds me of talking somebody step a step through something like this. So now I'm almost finished with what I'm doing and I'm still, oh, got it there almost to this bottom part. And so it did not complete. So let me just show you something I can do. I can click on it and then right click and you see where it says edit points and I can just bring this point down to here. And so now I can fill it 
with any color I want. Let's, let's use our eyedropper tool. I mean, I have lots of colors you can see already, but if I just chose a base color like this dark green, there it is. So there's the dark green kind of background there. If I click off, you can see that's kind of the outline. So that's the first part of kind of cartoonizing it. It does have the border, so if I make that transparent, now you can kind of see. And some people like that if you want to also use your drop shadows, because that also makes some nice uh, kind of uh, shows some distance and shows uh, some depth. You can see that in the picture. There. And there it is. Yeah, I'll be a little tighter. So I can use that. And so if I wanted to get this one, I would just kind of do the same thing. Is I would select poly tool. Start here. Draw my line. And for the curves, you know, you want to get even closer that way. You're really making it look curved rather than kind of this quick little short lines that I'm going to. Mine aren't as angled. There. And so I had the same color, so now it completed. So let's say I don't like that color and I want to do a different color. One of the first things I do is always bring up the picture and say, okay, what color do I really want? I kind of like this one. It seems to be most of this background. So I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool, the color picker here, and what this does is it allows me to hover over anything and it shows the actual color and it gives you what I might need. So let's say this is the color I want right there. I click on it and it gives me a code here and I copy it down and now I'll just go into my uh, tools again, so I'm going to go back, and this is one of the shapes. So instead of using the colors from here, I'm going to go to custom and just paste the hex number in there and say OK. And there it is. And so now if I want that one with the same hex number, it's the last one I chose, so it's right there. And zoom out. And that's what I have so far. So Pretty neat little tool, and you can continue on. If you want to zoom in right here, you can look at, let me use Control Alt Plus to really show you some details. So this eye is here, and then if I do it again, you can see there's lots of different lines in between here. And using your order buttons, bring them up and down, you can see I'm able to show what might be showing. So now I can bring that eye out a little bit more. And that might make a difference when I go back and look at it all together. It's like, oh yeah, that bottom line kind of made that circle fit better. Uh, so just deciding and looking at little shadows. So let's do the one more on this one. So we're going to go bring this back to the front. And let's say I want to do kind of this line right here. This kind of looks like a curvy little line. So I'm going to go to the poly tool and I'll start here and I'm just clicking and I'm clicking until I see kind of the line fades. I'm trying to just get as close as I can. There. So now I make it transparent and so now I can see that part. Go to my eye picker tool, select it, copy it, and now go to my custom tool, paste it in again, and voila. There it is. Let's take off the border. And so now, oops, my arrow key back. So now if I go to the regular picture and put it down, there, so you can kind of see that line associated with the one I just brought. So combined together, it'll start to show more of a curved look rather than just kind of this flat image that I have. So this is what 
you can do, again, pick something simple, uh, pick something that you might want to try, just even on this picture, just to get the hang of it, and then maybe try this one. Send me your, your and finished Android if you want. I'm going to leave it at this and just allow you to, to work from what I already started. Before I go, just one more thing. I just want to show you a simple version. So I just took a picture. There's my child here, and then this is the cartoonized picture of the same thing. Again, not a lot of detail. Um, I didn't go as depth with all the colors and the shading, but still, from an outside perspective, this, this kind of does have a likeness. And if I were to zoom out to like 50%, you can kind of see it has a likeness to it. And so if you're using it for an avatar or something like that, it could provide a good example. And you could make your own as opposed to those emojis that don't really look like people unless you have distinguishing characteristics. All right, so have fun with your graphic art and we'll see you for activity seven.